Well, hello there. Welcome back to the channel. This is Mavery, continuing on with episode 7 of Bakemono Gatari, the series where I sit around for 20 plus minutes and have no clue what is going on on my screen. And I mean that in the best way possible, right? Uh, I do enjoy it uh, when a series manages to defy my expectations as to what's actually going to happen, right? Heaven knows I have, uh, you know, having experience with a lot of anime, a lot of manga, and whatnot, you kind of get jaded in a sense where you you pretty much know all the cliches and tropes and whatnot in monogatari uh it's quite refreshing it's quite random uh, in a sense but uh, at least it keeps me interested right and i feel like that is probably the most important thing in all of this um i was definitely surprised last episode with the you know the sudden um thrashing that Aragi got at the end there, which is also kind of ironic in a way, considering his conversation with Sanju Gahara just a few minutes prior. Uh, and we do know that that, you know, the, the, the oddity that thrashed him was probably Suriga, right? Well, we, I can say that with 99.9% .9 confidence it was. Uh, how that actually ties into the entire story, though, no, don't have a quite clear idea on that yet. Probably knowing more in this episode. Let's see if I can actually get this right this time. So without further ado, let's get into the episode. All right, let's begin in three, two, one, play. Well, it's good that he's near death then. <laughs> Well, he already got one. Really? <laughs> no, I think she knows. See, she knows. You guys might also want to get off the railroad track first. Oh, her scare. <laughs> well, I mean, it's. He's seen it before, right? <laughs> uh, all right, I'll read this real quick. And I mentioned this last episode, but I still feel like this song reminds me a lot of uh, a lot of um, Skater Boy by Avril Lavigne. Also, Glamorous Sky from Nana. I guess these flowers mean something, probably. I mean, Senjo Gahara's story, or her opening, we had lots of staplers, right? With my yogis... Well... Hmm. Okay, I, I have no clue right now. I'm not going to... Go off on a wild guess here. Maybe after this episode. Oh. Literally the monkey's paw? You know, I was thinking about that last episode, whether or not it had a reference to monkey's paw, but uh, I, I don't see the connection at all. Oh. 
Ouais. What the hell is going on here? If Iragi didn't have those powers, he would have literally been killed, wouldn't he? You don't need to ask him that, do you? You literally beat him up yesterday and he's fine right now. Empire, cat, stapler, crap. I'm I'm getting way too distracted by the room that they're in. Her hand. So it's turned into like a monkey's paw. Yeah. But the one from last episode had two paws. Right, I do know about... <sighs> Wait, was it literally that simple? I mean, if it really is just that simple, I'm kind of pissed off. Because I thought, you know, I was going through all the different kinds of theories and whatnot. Living oddity. Oh, 
Is it a result of her wishing for something? <laughs> so there's more to this? I mean, that much was obvious. That's quite the heavy love. But she rejected you, right? Yeah, it's heavy. Yeah, that's a monologue. Thank you for pointing that out. Right, it is jealousy, right? So is it a cause of a of a wish gone bad? Hmm. 
Really? It is such a simple case of being a monkey's paw. Damn it. <laughs> Straight for the peel. <laughs> it got bigger. <laughs> yeah, I was like, that is complete. Araki's just like, please kill me. This is so ridiculous. That's literally not important, I don't argue. Yeah. And back to this place.
Cause she's a Yuri. When you put it that way. Thank you. Like I said, I would have been. <sighs> A rainy devil? They can make anything come true. Wouldn't that be the same as a monkey's paw? Oh really? Free wishes? Yeah, isn't that the same as a monkey's paw? Like, <laughs> Alright, whatever. Whatever. <laughs> I'll see you guys after this. Alrighty, so we were kind of thrown into a loop-de-loop -loop here uh, with its initial idea of it being a monkey paw, but then in the end turning out not to be right. So as I mentioned, I did c briefly consider this last episode once I saw it because, you know, monkey paw, that's like the, the first thing that pops into my mind. But I didn't really go down that path either because, you know, just as it was mentioned in this episode, the monkey paw as, you know, from the short story that I know it from, uh, it's really more of a independent item, right? And it also grants you wishes in weird and perverted ways that you wouldn't really expect, right? I, I think uh, my memory is a little bit hazy, but I believe the original story was where um, uh, I think it was that the the owner wished for money or something like that or fortune uh but he got it by by misfortune falling onto someone else right uh, and that was how the initial story went and so uh you know, it being an independent item and whatnot and considering that last episode it was more like you know granting granting uh Zuria inhuman strength and something like that i didn't really think that was the case there and so even now it's i guess sort of similar but uh still not quite it right and to be honest i'm a little bit skeptical about that free wish thing um and you know demon getting your soul thing as well because uh you know if if that really were the case then uh 
you know, Surya already said that she wished upon Nepal that she wanted to be by Sindhu Gahara's side. Uh, and, well, if she... I guess the, the manifestation of that is uh, killing Araki, right, and to take his place. But if she wasn't... If the wish wasn't even, even able to accomplish that, then, I mean, that's a pretty shitty demon, isn't it? <laughs> um, so, so, yeah. Uh, I don't quite know about that part yet. Maybe, maybe not, or maybe there's a little bit deeper uh, to that. Um, don't really know, right? And I'm still trying to figure out, like the, you know, the, this entire story with with Asuriga because it seems quite straightforward, but at the same time, there's still some puzzling pieces about this, right? So obviously, even from last episode, it's already pretty much well, um, pretty much given that Asuriga is more of a Yuri, a lesbian, right? Um, so wasn't really shock all that shocking at all for for the reveal in this episode. Oh, and by the way, I forgot to mention this, but um, you know the uh, well, I guess I didn't really forget to mention this, but I uh, because they they brought up Yuri again, it suddenly struck me that the flowers which um which Suga was jumping around on in the opening for for her theme song, uh, those are lilies, right? And lilies in Japanese are called yuri. Uh, which is also a name for lesbians, right? So uh, that's how that makes a connection there. But like I said, that's not really any big surprising thing. Uh, it was quite obvious there. Um, and I find it kind of funny that she also has obsessive tendencies similar to Senju Gahara. Like, they both have the makings of a yandere. <laughs> um, and, but still, it seems fairly straightforward, right? So she's jealous of this, uh, of this relationship. She wants, she really wishes to, to, uh, you know, revert her uh, relationship with Senju Gahara again. Well, maybe even more than revert, maybe even become, um, to a higher level, to become lovers or whatnot. And so, you know, this this wind uh, wish granting tool uh, came up and possessed her right so that that seems fairly straightforward and I feel like I don't know it, it's it seems that uh, because of the first two arcs I'm kind of expecting a twist here right um, that that it really explains this whole situation and ties the whole thing together um, of course it, it could also be possible that the twist is that there is no twist right but I don't know I feel like there's still some some sus suspicious things here and also mentioned in last episode's dialogue as well that doesn't really quite add up right so one of the first things that that popped into my mind and still um, you know they didn't really touch expand on that here and that is the the quote from Senju Gahara in regards to Suruga's family right she comes from a pretty um, well, see they didn't even mention anything about it they just uh, she just said that she has a hard time in her household as well so uh, looking at her her house um, you know where she lives in in this episode it seems to be she's quite well off quite rich uh, in a sense you know, maybe coming from a more prestigious family Potentially, maybe her Yuri tendencies is getting her in trouble, right? That might also be part of the entire story as well. Um, or, or I don't know, it might also be a case where, uh, if, re if I recall, Senju Gahara's family used to be also quite well off as well. So maybe there is this kind of balance between them that's now been broken because of you know, the events that happened with Sindhu Gahara's mother, um, potentially, it, that could also be a path that it's going to go on. Um, but again, since there, we don't really have any mention of that in this episode, it's hard for me to say, right? Um, and then the, the other thing that doesn't also doesn't quite add up to me is, you know, uh, both Sindhu Gahara and uh, Surya have mentioned that they were on quite good terms and even friends during middle school, right? And so once Sindhu Gahara got to high school, yeah, the condition, you know, the entire situation with her mom, um, having an oddity within her and whatnot, so it sort of changed her. I could totally understand if it kind of changed her personality, right? Um, made her have a completely different take on life. Uh, and so, you know, even you know, acting cold toward those that you were uh, originally friends with and whatnot, or, you know, just trying to protect yourself and not wanting to involve others, you know, all these kinds of different excuses, right? So I could totally understand why her relation with Surga might have been broken off from then. However, now that she has reverted back, you know, what's stopping her from, from you know, becoming friends with Suga again? And in, clearly in the last episode, we can see that Sindhu Gahara is still quite um, annoyed with, uh, with Suga in a sense, and really doesn't 
doesn't really speak of her in a good light at all. So what exactly happened there, right? Was it a case of perhaps Suriga made her confession or made a move towards Senjugahara and then she was rejected? So uh, it's more in that case and Senjugahara was really Senjugahara is really not interested and so she rejected uh, that part and that's why she's also acting cold towards Suriga as well. Or maybe, you know, again, judging from last episode where uh, we learned that perhaps there's a little bit more to Senjugahara than, than we already know of. Uh, I feel like that might also be a, you know, that might also be a plot point that goes deeper here and that helps in, um, helps in completing Suriga's story and her current condition, right? Because, like I said, I just don't feel like it's going to be that straightforward of a manner. Um, so... Yeah, that's basically it. Uh, but as for the specifics, like what it actually is, still have no idea, honestly. So, well, I guess we can just continue on to find out. So, there we go. That's my review for Bakemono Gallery Episode 7. Next episode, I believe, is the end of this arc. Uh, let's see how this all ends, right? See you guys next time. Bye-bye.